To finish up the last few points, number one, that nuts and seeds are particularly important against cancer and to promote lifespan because having some fat in your diet is important for the absorption of the anti-cancer phytochemicals. So here's a Seventh-day Adventist study following vegans who did not eat nuts and seeds and comparing their lifespan to those vegans who ate nuts and seeds, showing that nuts and seeds were among the most powerful inclusions or exclusions affecting lifespan. The same thing that was shown in the physician's health study, the nurse's health study, the Iowa woman's health study, that the inclusion of nuts and seeds in a diet dramatically extended human life and prevented sudden cardiac death and cancer death. That means it dramatic effects on promoting or cause longevity. And you've heard about the benefits of olive oil, right? Well, here's the Prevament study, it's a large study, that showed when people stopped eating, when they didn't eat as much saturated fat from butter and cheese, and they ate more olive oil, they did better. And more servings a week of olive oil made them lower the risk of mortality from lower the death rate because they were eating less of the saturated fat. But that's not the whole story. Because in the Prevament study, when people compared people using olive oil to people using walnuts or other nuts and seeds, they found their death rate went in half again that the true benefits occurred from, yes, from having some fat in the diet and compared to butter, yes, but the most beneficial way to get your fats is with a whole food. Not, olive oil is not a whole food. It might be better than butter, but it's not, but, the, but you get tremendous benefits from using nuts and seeds as a source of fat. The point is, when I make a salad dressing, I put the vinegar, we blend it in with some nuts and seeds. If I make a delicious dressing, maybe I make a tomato Russian dressing, like I'll put in some tomato paste or a homemade tomato sauce with some roasted garlic. Maybe some almonds and sunflower seeds in there as the source of fat. Maybe some blood orange, some um, balsamic vinegar or maybe some fig vinegar, black fig vinegar. I love that in there with the black vinegar with the tomato. And I'll maybe I'll put a few raisins or a fig in there and blend it all up. And I'll make that delicious dressing on top of my salad with the red onion and the tomatoes cut in. Or maybe I'll make a fruit dressing with maybe some kiwis or strawberries in the salad. And I'll make a big dressing with, with mosh and watercress and, and kiwi and, and different let lettuces and onion. And I'll pour, make a dressing by peeling a navel orange and mixing it with some raw cashews and some toasted sesame seeds, lightly toasted sesame seeds, that I mixed in there with blood orange vinegar and a little squeeze of lemon. Really, really tasty. And then I'll maybe mix that in... Um, into the salad. Maybe I'll take some of those toasted sesame seeds which are just toasted for about 30 seconds and I'll sprinkle them on top of the salad too. Maybe use those black sesame seeds on top of the salad and eat that as a great. So you'll make the dressings taste really good because these nuts and seeds that are high in omega-3 have beneficial effects on your brain and the chia seeds and the hemp seeds and the sesame seeds have the protective anti-cancer lignans in them that protect so powerfully against breast cancer and prostate cancer. I know that a lot of you are eating some of these every day already, right? Yeah, right? The other principle of a nutritarian diet, which I didn't mention yet, the fourth principle, is called CNA. CNA, Comprehensive Nutrient Adequacy. That means nutrient density is not enough. You also need to fill every peg in the hole. You have to make sure you're not missing any nutrient that humans need. You could eat a ton of kale and strawberries and you know, raw onion, you're eating plenty of healthy food. But what if you're deficient in B12 or vitamin D or DHA or zinc? Because those foods aren't high in those nutrients. We have to make sure that you have everything you need, even if you are eating a diet with an otherwise nutrient density. And one of these nutrients that humans need may be DHA for the brain as we age. Let me discuss this briefly. Because if you're going to follow a nutritarian diet and live to be 95 to 100 years, if you're going to live, you know, really a long time, then what about aging of the brain as you live that long? Then we've got to protect the brain because the studies show that low levels of DHA are associated with brain shrinkage with el in the elderly. That means the levels, we're showing that lower levels can be, show the hippocampus where, they, where memory is and judgment can shrink. The brain shrinks more when levels of DHA is, is low. And, and the question is, do vegans who are not de supplementing with DHA, have, do they have a risk of getting DHA deficiency? Or people on near vegan diets or even on a nutritarian diet, am I, are my sure that all people are going to have adequate amount of DHA to sustain them if they live to 85, 95, or 100 years old? And the answer is that we did a study on 166 vegans who were not supplementing with EPA and DHA and found that 64% had insufficient levels and 27% were significantly deficient. And that we looked at their levels of flaxseed or flaxseed oil or walnuts that they were eating, the, the, whether they had a source of ALA in their diet, and we found that those that were so significantly deficient did not correlate well 
with whether they were eating walnuts or other sources of ALA. Because when the people that were deficient, it, it speaks to the fact that it was more genetically determined by conversion enzyme differences from person to person, not based on what they were eating. So it is, it is potentially risky for some people who have a higher requirement for EPA to DHA to not to eat any source of that by fish. But the fish is polluted, and the commercial fish is even more polluted with 14 times the dioxin of, you know, of wild fish. Like you go to the restaurant and you say, oh, well, I ate healthy all week. I'm going to eat something in a restaurant. I'll eat the burger or the meat. Well, it looks, oh, they have some salmon there. I might as well have the salmon. But you don't even realize that the salmon is probably the most toxic thing you could eat in the whole restaurant. It's not wild salmon. That's commercial salmon. That's been, that's been farm raised and that has 14 times the dioxin of, re of regular of fish, even 10 times the dioxin of, of commercially raised beef. Well, the point I'm making here is that EPA DHA is important for brain and memory as you age. It's linked to depression in women, and it's potentially possible for people to be dangerously low for their future in EPA and DHA, but a little bit, a little bit is protective. In other words, in the study that I just um, demonstrated, showed you, that we gave people just 200 milligrams a day and to normalize the levels in almost every single case. You don't, if you want to take a source of, like a vegan source of EPA and DHA, you don't need a lot, you just need a little bit, a tiny bit. Because your body preferentially will hold on to that it needs and save that and not burn it for calories, not burn it for energy. It'll put it to its storage where it needs and it'll burn other fats for energy. So you don't have to take a huge amount. It's not the EHA, it's not the omega-3, omega-6 balance in your diet. It's to burn off those extra omega-6s and fats you don't need to allow the body to save and to retain the omega-3 it does need. It's to supply sufficient amount of omega-3 while you don't put excess fat on your body. That's how you maintain the omega-3, omega-6 balance in your tissues. It's the omega-6, omega-3 balance in your body's tissues that's important, not the omega-3, omega-6 balance in your diet. Did you follow that? If you don't have a lot of fat on your body and consume adequate DHA, you were shaking your head no. I was speaking too fast and you didn't follow that. I'll go over it again. Some people think that your diet has to have this favorable ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 for good health. And I'm saying that that's not that important. What's important is that the omega-3 to omega-6 balance in your body's tissues and cell membranes, that's important. And to get the, the favorable balance in your own body's tissues, you, as you lose weight and as you attain a normal body fat mass, then you will not have a lot of omega-6 stores in your tissues, and your body will utilize the omega-3 it takes in in the right places to balance out its own tissues, and your tissues will have a favorable body store of omega-3 omega index on them. I don't, have to worry, I don't have to not eat any cashews or pecans because the omega-6, omega-3 ratio is unfavorable because I'm burning those for energy because I'm relatively slim because I exercise and I eat right, and I meet my omega-3 needs. So my tissue stores of omega-3, omega-6 balance are favorable, even though my diet may not have a favorable omega-3, omega-6 balance every single day. Did you follow that better? Best source of well, there are two types of omega-3 and omega-6, and I, I was explaining that I want you to have both sources. In other words, I want you to have these nuts and seeds I was talking about, the walnuts, the hemp seeds, the flax seeds, the chia seeds. You see it says ALA under that? That stands for alpha linolenic acid. That's the amount you have that every day. That's the best source. But I am saying that that's not sufficient for many people. They also need a source of EPA and DHA because a lot of people don't convert that into EPA and DHA sufficiently. And what's the best source for that? Well, probably a vegan EPA and DHA supplement because it's more or less chance of pollute, having pollutants and rancidity. I'm, I make one that has, um, that we keep refrigerated in glass so we keep it very fresh. Yes, so, yeah, so because a lot of the ones you buy in a store are too old, they're on the shelf life and they're not refrigerated and they have more rancidity. But fish oil can be highly rancid. Could be, you know, could be fish that was killed years ago and not kept refrigerated, you know. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm, I, I think you have, you guys are understanding that point. So this is that question which whether or which type of omega-3 I'm recommending, I'm probably recommending algae-grown omega-3 made right here in Florida. They have a, a monopoly. All the, all the algae omega-3 in, in the country is made right here in a company in Florida. And um, a small amount will do a, a very small amount is sufficient. You don't need to overdose on the stuff if you're eating a healthy diet. Can you go back? Go back? So I'm saying here that a small amount, 100 to 300 of DHA and 50 to 100 of EPA, maybe a, you know, 100 to 200, you don't have to take a lot of this stuff. 
Plus, everybody should be having at least a tablespoon of chia or flax seeds a day, or hemp a day for ALA. And you get other protective ligands in the process. I can't go back. I've got to finish this up now. <laughs>